My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Northwest Miskatonic on RimWorld and this is episode 4 of the Call of Cthulhu series on RimWorld. We picked up exactly where we left off last time with our prisoner born in his makeshift cell and the corpse of Beryl still lying in the medical spot yet to be removed. First event of the day is a couple of rare thrombos. They've entered our map. Of course, given our weak position and the thrombos strong attacks we shall not be uh, making any attempt to hunt those thrombos and we shall leave them to their business for today i'd like to get this chapel stroke cult worship center all finished out we've excavated roughly about 50 percent of it and q continues to work away in there now as we can see and hopefully we'll be able to get born as a uh, fully fledged member of our colony at the moment we're working on converting him to our ideology and we're about halfway there 43 percent as we can see so hopefully in the not too distant future we will be able to recruit him into the colony i realize we could do this with a law keeper of course and they do have the special interaction uh, the conversion interaction however i'm holding off on that simply because the law keeper will demand the the apparel that we flagged for the law keeper role and i'd rather wait until we have some nice warm furs available to be able to construct that that way it'll keep them happy and it will also help offset some of the uh, colder temperatures that we're likely to experience out here in the frozen parts of the uh, of the tundra so I'm holding off on that for now. Obviously in the near future, if we can get some nice warm furs, I mean, we have 303 blue fur already and that actually might be enough to craft what we need. But to do that crafting, we will need a tailor's bench, which we don't yet have. So it might be worth actually expanding this little workshop area a little further northwards towards the mountain's edge. And then we could put down a tailoring bench and construct the required apparel in there. In the meantime, however, we do have a combat, combat, you know, it's a combat supplier who's come to peddle their wares and we'll see what they have available. And if there's anything that we like the look of. While they're making the way over, then let's plan out what we want to do here. We don't, oh no, we do have quite a few bones left, 550. So we can utilize some of that bone in our structure here. And we'll do this fairly large and then we'll deconstruct all of this and have it as one large workshop area and then we'll just rotate this stone cutters bench like so so it's not just sticking out like a sore thumb in the middle of the floor okay and there we go so there's the outer structure completed and it's now all roofed over and the little partition has been dealt with as well as rotating the stone cutters table so let's have a look here then. So we want production and we want the hand tailor bench for the time being. We have 149 units of wood. However, I prefer to keep that on as a fuel supply. So we will construct this out of bone, of course, given that we have quite an abundance of it and it's an easy resource to stock up on when we do exhaust our supplies. So once that's constructed, we'll then have a look at the apparel that they require. And in fact, we could check that now just by going into our ideology screen here and it was the cthulhu cultist hood and the cultist vestments the tentacle version for the law keeper it's the shrouded cultist hood and the traditional cultist vestments so if we were to construct both of those for the law keeper out of blue fur as i said what it's going to do it's going to help offset the negative temperatures that we're going to get so they shouldn't start freezing to death and then we're not going to have to annoy them by forcing them to wear something a little bit warmer just to keep them from going hypothermic on a constant basis. So let's start then with the vestments. It was the traditional vestments, of course, for the law keeper. This requires 80 units of fabric, which we have more than enough of. And before we actually construct this or before we uh, sew this, let's go ahead clear out all of the allowed items and we'll just set blue fur only and then once that's done we're going to add another bill and this is headgear and this is the shroudest cultist hood 
And once again, we'll do the same thing here using only blue fur. And this requires 25 fabrics. So yes, more than enough to get those two up and running. I think what I may also be tempted to do temporarily until our electric electrical supply is a little more substantial is just put down another campfire to the northern end of our newly expanded workshop just so this one isn't struggling too much keeping the temperature comfortable for our colonists while they're in here. Now who do we have set assigned to do our tailoring? It is Q with a priority of two and she has a skill of nine so she should make decent quality outfits here. And she's off to rest so we'll let her rest and then in the morning we shall have her start work on the crafting. The traders are nearby now, I haven't forgotten about those and who we want to go and conduct our trades. Well I'd rather not rouse Q from her slumber so the second best social socialise that we have is our newly joined Amy. So we'll send Amy out as soon as she's finished her evening meal. There we go. And we'll have her conduct the trade and just see what we have available. Okay, we could sell the Syntheline Shiv and the Steel Club, although it's not going to net us too much, just 13 units of silver. Obviously, we have no silver ourselves to trade with. So this is just going to be a simple selling transaction. Ah, we've researched the uh, battery technology, which is a big step forward in our power production and obviously our power storage to keep us going when the wind dies down. We have three components. I think a battery takes four, or at least the battery that I would prefer to have takes four. Let's have a look. The large battery, yes, indeed, four components. So let's just have a quick look around here. Uh, we have some compacted machinery just there, so we'll flag that entire vein, which is six tiles, which is quite nice to be mined out in the future. And then once we get those components on hand, of course, we'll come start constructing our first set of batteries. Okay, so Q is now up and about six o'clock in the morning, and she started work on the tailoring. Born still sleeps. Who do we have assigned as our warden? Let me remind myself here, oh, it's Q as well. Although Amy isn't too bad with a social skill of five, that's only one less than Q. So I don't think there's any harm in asking Amy to also take care of some of the prisoner interactions for us. That allows Q to focus her efforts on the tailoring jobs that we need doing. What are you doing? You're refueling the campfire. And now you're going to go and convert Bourne anyway, or at least make an attempt to do so. So down to 31%, so fairly slow going. As soon as we get the law keeper role set up though, it should go down a lot faster. Obviously to draft or to uh, bestow the role of law keeper upon one of our colonists, we are going to need to put down the, where is it? The ideogram. This costs 50 steel. We have 913 of that, so that's not an issue. And I think we'll place it over this side like that. And then the altar for our cult will go on this side and the pews will then go in the middle so they can use the pews interchangeably. All right, so Izzy has suffered a mental breakdown. Luckily, it's only the hide in room mental break, so he's of no danger to himself or more importantly to others, of course. Although Amy might be able to snap him out of it here. Sadly not, but it was worth the attempt. It's also going to boost Amy's social skill, of course, so well worth attempting, of course. Right, so I've just queued up another round of research for our colonists. And the next research we're going to focus on is the Altar of Sacrifice. This allows us to upgrade our altar, which we obviously don't have installed yet. And that allows us to form sacrifices on said altar, which helps boost your favour with your chosen deity. So that's worth doing. Plus it fits in with the vibe and the theme as well. So there's no harm in doing that, of course. As we can see, the chapel is almost fully excavated, which is really, really good to see. I actually want these stone chunks hauling out as soon as we can, just to make things a little bit cleaner in there. As we've seen, this environment has already caused one of our colonists to suffer a mental break. All right, there we are. That's the stone chunks all hauled out of there. The ideogram hasn't been started on yet, although all the steel has been sent over there, ready for construction. And Q has just finished the 
traditional cultist vestments as we can see just there and they are also of good quality which is nice to see as well let's just have a look here as we can see it does insulate to 15.4 degrees or 27.7 degrees fahrenheit against the cold that is not going to compare against the cloaks that they are currently wearing as we can see here the blue fur pelt coat this insulates to 39 degrees but of course that is going to be better in blue fur than it would be say in plain leather so while it's not as efficient at insulating as the robes that they're currently wearing it's going to be better than it could have been which is the main thing of course now for our law keeper we of course want Q to assume that role due to her high social skill and her minor passion for that talent and there we go she's almost in fact she has done the hood and she's already donned it which is really good because she was going to be the one wearing it anyway and if we have a look at this this insulates to 10 degrees and in fact i believe if we should be able to oh no we can't do it in there one second just bear with me here you do it this way through this screen if we say go to the traditional vestments that we've just constructed and look at the information so if they were made out of cloth the cold insulation would be 12.6 degrees so if we were to use the plain lever that we have on hand let's just find it here there it is it only insulates to 11.2 degrees whereas the blue fur is 14 degrees so it was well worth changing out to blue fur as you can see every degree could count when the depths of winter strike so i'm pleased with that result okay so everybody apart from izzy is now up and about q is working on the ideogram it does take a fair bit of work to complete so it might be a while till we see the fruits of our labor there once these stone chunks here are mined out as well we're going to put down our cultist altar then we can start indoctrinating everybody into our cult which i believe was called the cult of the bloody tongue okay so the ideogram has now been completed so we can now begin the role change ceremony so we're going to have the law keeper and the role changer is going to be q this gives an expected quality of 100% which is good due to three participants taking part any more than one should guarantee you 100% so that's fantastic so let's now begin and everybody should make their way over here come the spectators now Gabe, Izzy and Amy will be along shortly here she comes now successful role change okay so now q is our law keeper and that means she can now use his convert interaction and we'll give it a shot straight away on board and see what effect this is going to have there we go he has been converted to the set of eldritch so our next interaction is going to be recruit born into our colony that will take our colony numbers up to five which is good going Okay, so three desperate refugees are approaching. Their leader is called Kangaroo. They say a great flash storm burned down the home. Kangaroo begs you permission to stay at Innsmouth for 17 days so they can rest and regroup. In return, they have to work and fight for free during that time. I'm going to reject that quest for now. We won't always be rejecting those in the future. Of course, in the future, what we will be doing is accepting them and uh, either forcibly converting them to join us or we shall be uh, offering them up as a sacrifice okay so it's the next morning as we can see without me having to intervene q has opted to don the blue fur cultist vestments that we crafted for her she is insulated down to negative 19 degrees so that's good so she's going to be comfortable in the current temperatures we'll have to wait to see what happens in the depths of winter obviously this far north we are permanently in winter but it is going to get a lot colder as the traditional winter months do roll around at the moment we're in august which is obviously technically a summer month so it's going to be a little bit warmer now than it will be in two months time of course okay so the uh, the church has been fully excavated as we can see so the next thing i'm going to put down in here as discussed is an altar so here's the cult altar here it costs 125 steel i think making it out of bone will be a little bit more fitting we have 348 of that resource in stock so we have 
enough to spare. So we'll put down the altar just there. The next thing we want are a few pews. And again, I think we'll go ahead and make these out of bone. And we want a couple that face the altar. And then we want a couple that face the ideogram like so. And as if timing is everything, we've also finished researching the altar of sacrifice. Now you can't build that outright. You first have to build your basic altar and then there's an option on the altar screen to upgrade it. As far as I can tell, it does not cost any resources. So we'll see that in a few moments. But with that research project now finished, we can turn our attention to something different. And I do think we'll go for probe occult deities just to see what other deities are out there, of course. Okay, so we need some more bone as we can see. We've exhausted our supply on these first pews. Perhaps we'd have been better off researching or constructing the pew first of all. Okay, so we've finished the research for probing the occult deities and we have discovered Bast. Titles Pasht, Bastet, Ubaste, Ubaste, Goddess of Cats, Daughter of Rey, Chewer of Corpses, Domains Cats, Egypt and Ghouls. Bast is the Egyptian goddess of cats. All cats of the world follow the commands of Bast, and some say her influence has reached the far-flung worlds of the Rim. In written texts, she is often affiliated with Sekhmet, the warrior goddess, as well as Mut, the goddess of motherhood. Saracen sorcerers tell tales of ghouls that also worship her and call her the Chewer of Corpses. Mm, very grim indeed. Speaking of corpses, we're going to need some more to harvest some bones from them because we don't have enough to construct our altar as we just saw there. So let's see, what do we have on the map that we would like to hunt? Something fairly substantial, not the snow hares because they won't yield a lot of bones of course, they're only small animals. What do we have down here? A couple of gazelle or ibex, they're not gazelle. Is that the lot? A couple more ibex down here. It looks like the rest is indeed snow hares. An arctic wolf, of course, but given that the ibex do not revenge attack when you uh, hunt them, I think we'll stick to the ibex for the time being. Okay, so our wood supplies are dwindling. We only have 14 units of wood left in stock, so we are going to need some more trees pretty soon. In fact, as a matter of some urgency. So let's go ahead and order up the chopping of some wood down here. It is a fair distance from the colony, but there's a good little uh, outcrop of wood that we could harvest. In the meantime, of course, now that we've had a few extra components added to our stockpile, we can go ahead and construct the battery as discussed. 140 steel and four components, we can comfortably accommodate those requirements. And we want the, uh, the batteries to be really housed in something of a safe room just so there's no danger of them getting wet when the weather turns which could learn uh, lead to some disastrous short circuits for that i'm going to queue up the what's the word i'm looking for the cutting of some sandstone blocks we have a lot of sandstone now due to the excavation works in here so let's do that make any stone blocks details yes what's the ingredient radius there? let's just zoom out so we can see it Oh, that's brilliant. That's accommodating our stockpile. So we'll have somebody begin work on that. Who's our crafter here? Q once again. Although I'm actually tempted to drop Izzy down to level one, simply because Izzy does have the flame of passion there. So while his skill isn't quite as high as Q's as we can see there, three versus nine, he will soon gain the skills due to his passion and his interest in this pastime. Of course, at the moment, he's harvesting the wood for us, which is probably and arguably of a higher priority. We could do a temporary structure in steel, of course, and then replace it a little bit later on. And that actually might not be the worst idea in the world. Okay, we have a visitor. A ranger from southern Hatsibirium is visiting the colony, Vera Martinez, and she does have a few items to trade. So we'll have a chat to her when she gets a little bit closer. Okay, despite my original reticence to use the steel and upgrade it later, I have gone ahead and decided it would be better to get this battery constructed sooner rather than later. So we are going to use steel for the initial wall, and then when we have enough sandstone chunks carved down, we will replace the steel wall with sandstone bricks. That way we should reclaim not all of the steel that we've just used, of course, but we'll rec reclaim a percentage of the steel. 
at least this will allow us to start storing some power in our battery sooner rather than later. Okay, we never conducted the trade. The visitor is leaving, as we can see. Whereabouts is she? I can't spot her on the map. Oh, there she is, just walking away now. So that's a shame. We never got to conduct that trade there, but so be it. Okay, the planet's celestial alignment has shifted, causing a surge in mana. All creatures... Oh, creatures. That's not how that word's pronounced. All creatures attuned with magical powers will gain mana at an increased rate. Mm, very interesting. So, with a few IBEX now slaughtered up, we've increased our bone stockpile enough to construct the bone cult altar. So, we'll have that done hopefully in the next few moments. Okay, there we go. Here's the option, as I mentioned earlier, to upgrade the altar to a level 2. So, we'll do that immediately. There we go. As we see, it's changed the appearance of the altar as well. Now, let's go ahead and decide who we're going to worship. Our deity, we could have Shub Nugurath or Bast. And I think to start off, we will go for Shib Nugurath. Our preacher will be. Okay, so it can't be Q yet because she is not a member of the cult. And let's just verify that. Yeah, she's about halfway there. So. As soon as she tips over the 75% threshold, we will swap it out. But for now, we will allow Amy to handle these sermons. And what we'll do is we'll, just to get everybody on board as soon as possible, we shall set a morning and evening sermon for every day. So at 9 o'clock in the morning and at 6 p.m. in the evening, our colonists will gather to hear the sermon. That will increase all of their cult mindedness, of course. Then when Q has a high enough cult mindedness, we will have her take over the role. She's sitting backwards there. That's that's fine. He could have sat there next to Gabe. Maybe he smells or something. Who knows? But the sermon begins with Amy, as we can see. There we go, Innsmouth finished worshipping. That should have boosted their cult mindedness. Indeed, it has 63%. So, chances are, after tomorrow morning's sermon, then Q will be in a position to take the role of the priest for our cult, or the priestess, I suppose would be more technically correct. Okay, so I've now queued up the tailoring of a cultist hood in the Cthulhu style and some vestments in the tentacle style. And again, we're using the blue fur for those. And once both of those are completed, then of course we can elect to a point. And what's the, uh, I've got the title now. Yes, a great nameless, AKA the leader of the cult of Eldritch, Sector Eldritch. So hopefully they'll be done in the next couple of days, those two garments. And once they're done, then as discussed, we shall be able to appoint a religious leader. Okay, so the morning sermon is about to begin. And hopefully at this point everybody should be inducted into the cult. No, not quite yet, although they are very close. Q, meanwhile, is going to go off and fulfil the final hunting order that we have for the final remaining Ibex. There we go, with the, uh, the hunting order taken care of, Q now starts constructing the little power room and the battery to go inside there, there we go. This can store 1400 watts of power as we can see, an efficiency of 50%. So let's go ahead and get that connected now with some conduits. I'm gonna use subsurface conduits where needed, just so you don't see them trailing all over the map. They do cost more to construct. There you can see there by the, uh, the mouse icon, three units of steel. And when you contrast that to the regular power conduit, which only con uh, consumes one unit of steel. However, I do think it's worthwhile doing just so you don't see the power conduits everywhere. I am not entirely sure whether or not these surface conduits have a greater or lesser chance to short circuit or not, but we shall find out. If nothing else, it does keep the base looking that little bit tidier, which for aesthetic reasons is always nice. Okay, here comes the evening sermon now. Let's see at this point if any of our colonists will be inducted. Yes, both Izzy and Q have been initiated into the cult. So I think at this point now, we can spot the preacher out for Q. You do get a bonus to the sermon effectiveness if the preacher is wearing cultist garb, which Q is. She has the shrouded hood 
and the traditional cultist vestments. So we should see a, um, a more productive sermon taking place now. Given that everybody is now fully indoctrinated into the cult, we can swap this out. And I think what we'll do, we'll have double sermon, so a morning evening sermon, and we'll have that every three days. So it'll be sermon, two days without sermon, two days without, and so forth. Like that. And that should be enough to keep our colonists well, uh, well cult minded, shall we say? So there's no straying from the true path. All right, so the power conduits have been connected to the battery, and as we can see, we're now starting to slowly store a little bit of power in the uh, in the battery there. Obviously, the more power this kicks out, the more that's going to be stored. Once we have a little bit of a, a, a reserve built up, we'll then start swapping out some of these campfires for heaters, and we'll likely start swapping out some of these production centers for their electric counterparts. In fact, given our fairly healthy surplus of steel and components, I'm leaning towards putting down a second wind turbine already. In fact, I'm also quite tempted to go ahead and put another two down straight away. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put two more turbines down here. We will have to mine away this little rocky outcropping here, which is no big deal. We'll do that pretty quickly. We're also going to need some underground power conduits to link all these together so they're all part of the central network. All right then ladies and gentlemen for our next research attempt we're going to go for the research of solar panels. These will obviously augment and supplement the power production currently being handled primarily or solely by our wind turbines so we'll have a diversified power network. Okay, so that's the three wind turbines now constructed. As you can see, this one is currently temporarily being blocked by these sandstone chunks here. But they are going to be mined out very quickly. There's only three that we really need to mine out. And I do believe they should all be linked to the grid. Indeed, they are. As we can see, we're producing an excess now of 5,700 watts. And of that, we are storing 389 and rising. So that's now filling our large battery at a pretty decent rate. So at this point, we are going to be in a position to be able to start supplying electricity into our outlying buildings, of course. As I said, the first thing we want to do is perhaps swap out these campfires for heaters. That way we're not overly reliant on the wood that is getting scarcer and scarcer on our map, of course. Now to do that, of course, we need to lay some power conduits to each of the buildings. So we shall do that now. And again, while we're outside, we shall use the underground power cables like this. And for the rest, we shall just use the regular power conduits inside the walls, since you cannot see them. Okay, so there's the initial extent of our power grid laid out, as we can see. That should be enough to provide enough power to most of our areas. In the near future, we're probably going to want to go ahead and increase our battery supply and battery capacity by adding extra large batteries to function alongside this one. That way, in the event of an extended dip in the wind, we should have enough of a power reserve to keep the base functioning nicely without having to worry about switching things on and off. The Ship to the Stars quest has just become available, but we're not going to be interested in that at all, so we can just disregard that straight off the bat. Okay, so I was just looking there how we could handle our heating concerns in the base going forward. Now, obviously, the, uh, the vanilla option is to use heaters. As we can see, they take 50 steel on one component per heater, and we would need one for every single room. However, thanks to the, uh, the Dubs Central Heating mod that we have running, we can use an electric boiler instead. Now, this, in my experience, can handle quite a few radiators per boiler, and you can increase the power and the, uh, sorry, the heating output on the boiler to ensure that you can supply enough hot water to all of your radiators. This also has the added side benefit of being able to provide hot water to things like sinks and showers, which is gonna help our colonists smooth nicely. So I think on balance, I'm probably going to go and opt for the electric boiler. Now, of course, the downside to that is there's a bit more work required before we can set it up. We, of course, need to run heating pipes to all of our rooms, build radiators in all of our rooms, and they cost, obviously, as you see, 25 units of steel up there. However, to get the water, we're also going to need to construct a well and a pump and a water tower. 
Now that shouldn't be a big problem. These are just one hit, so it's not like we have to pull multiple of them, at least not in the early game. So I think that's the way we're going to go. So for the next few days, our colonists might have to continue using the campfires to keep warm, which should be fine. There should be just enough trees left to keep us going for a couple more days. And indeed, it looks like there is quite a decent cluster of trees down here if we do need to harvest some more wood. But yes, long term, we are going to be switching to central heating to provide our heating requirements for our colonists. That will save on a lot of components in the long run, which is quite critical, as components can be pretty difficult to come by, of course. So to that end, then, let's make a start on outlying our water production facilities. So as I've said, the first thing we're going to need is a water well. Now, in terms of uh, appropriate location, perhaps tucked away, I think this is just 2,310 litres pumping capacity. That gives us 2316, but the extra gain is probably not worth all the extra piping we'd have to do. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put our water pump just here, or the water well just there. And then what we're going to need are some pipes. Hmm. Eventually we will probably use bone, but we don't have the bone to spare. We could use sandstone, which is a bit odd, but we have plenty of it. I mean, it's easy to get more of that because we have a lot of sandstone around us. So we'll save our... What are we building there? A well. Did I put it in the wrong place? Cancel that construction. That's better. And work on this well instead. And we can put the pump fairly close to the base because the pipes are going to have to run over here anyway. So we'll have the pump situated there. Uh, we've researched solar panels, which is fantastic. I'm not selecting another research project just yet. We'll do that a little bit later. For now, I'd like to get this uh, water production up and running. So yes, then we're going to need a water storage facility, a water tower. And lastly, we need to get all this piped together like that. And once that's done, we can then start working on the central heating. Now, given that we've just unlocked solar panels, I think it's probably a decent idea to go ahead and just chuck a few down just to help supplement our power production, even though these are clearly doing more than enough because we filled our large battery already. So to that end, it actually might be worth going ahead, putting an extra battery down here. And at this point, I will now swap out to the sandstone walls as discussed, like so. And then we want a second battery. Okay, we don't have enough steel, that's no problem. We should be able to get more fairly easily. And we're going to have a subsurf. In fact, we may as well just have a regular power conduit like that. And then we'll put one there when the wall's constructed. So for steel, we have a large steel vein here, which we can start mining. So we'll flag that to be mined. Okay, we have a raid, a group of pirates from the terrorists. Uh, suitable name, I suppose have arrived nearby and they're going to prepare for a while and then attack so we can prepare a defense or we can go and attack them preemptively. Now there's only one of them, they're only armed with what's this, a steel hatchet. So Q would have the upper hand in the battle because she has a ranged weapon. So we'll allow her to finish her attempt to recruit Born. And once she has done that, there we go, 3.7, we are going to send her out to deal with our little attacker ahead of time and we'll do it on our own terms so to speak okay so she's engaged there and we've landed our first successful hit Connor doesn't seem to be retaliating yet that's a second hit okay and he is already down so that problem was very swiftly dealt with which is fantastic so let's get the silver and the hatchet hauled back to base and somebody else can come haul the corpse at their earliest convenience Okay, so with our water production facilities underway, I think this is a decent time to end the episode. In the next episode, obviously, we, we shall continue our heating efforts using the Dubs Central Heating Mod, using the boiler and the radiators and the piped water that we're soon to have in abundance. We also want to get some steel for some solar panels. To that end, we have this steel vein set to be mined out, as we saw earlier. 
Now, for the next episode, it might not be until after Christmas, as I'm sure you can appreciate with the uh, children now being out of school for the Christmas period. Things are a little bit hectic this time of year at home, as I'm sure you can well appreciate. So, just on the off chance, and I think in fact not an off chance, it's a very good chance, on the very good chance that uh, there's no episode between now and Christmas, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas for those of you who celebrate. Those of you who do not, I wish you a very Merry Saturday. But either way, I hope you have a wonderful time and you all stay safe and well. And I shall see you hopefully between the intervening period between Christmas and New Year. So yes, take care of yourselves. Have an enjoyable holiday period. And it's Tata for now.